Hi, hello and welcome. Um, today I want to try something different. Um, I want to answer some of my viewers' questions that were posted uh, beneath uh, the YouTube videos and uh, there are also a few beginners' questions and I think they're kind of interesting and also important. Um, so yes, that's what I'm gonna do today. So, okay, so hello and welcome back. Um, there was a user who posted a few beginner's questions uh, beneath one of the YouTube videos and I thought it's a good idea to actually respond uh, to some of them uh, because I think that these questions might be interesting uh, in general to yeah to, to many viewers. So uh, the first uh, question here is, is, is what are some ways to film or photograph th things through a microscope? First of all, I did make a separate separate YouTube video on, um, on that. Um, but one thing that I simply would recommend, and that's probably the easiest way, is simply to use um, a mobile phone to take pictures without an adapter, without any extra hardware. Just try taking pictures and uh, videos using a mobile phone. And in order to do this, I simply also want to tell you what you have to do. I've got an eyepiece here. Um, you need to be very patient and you need a steady hand because what you need to do is, is you need to adjust the correct distance between the mobile phone uh, objective and uh, the eyepiece of the of the microscope okay the distance is really important otherwise you're not going to get a picture um, you also have to have the correct uh, x x y position so to say in relation to the um, eyepiece um, and not only that you also are not allowed to tilt it in any direction okay and it's like this that uh, it's so sensitive that if it's off only a little bit you're not going to get a good picture okay so uh, you need a lot of patience and what i would recommend actually is, is the following i recommend actually that uh, you place let's say two fingers over uh, the eyepiece like this and you see that it's a little bit higher than the eyepiece and that you place with your other hand um, the camera on top here okay um, like this um, and that you try to take a picture like this. I don't know if you can see this now, okay? But you need to basically need to make a rest uh, for the camera um, using your fingers because you cannot place it directly on the eyepiece because that would be too close, okay? So um, there are different ways of how you can do that. I actually tried something like this once, okay? That you kind of hold it like this. I don't know if you can see this now, okay? That you have basically two fingers uh, beneath uh, uh, the mobile phone to kind of stabilize it would look like this okay um, and then with the other um, hand you can actually uh, take uh, take a picture okay that would be a possibility you do need a little bit of practice and patience uh, because um, as I said um, yeah if it's a little bit off you're not getting the right picture anymore what you have to do is you have to adjust the distance in such a way that you actually see a, um, a bright circle in here with very sharp and clear edges you'll know when you have a, a, a clear picture it's very evident okay so that is the, the, the thing that I would recommend first so a second question, um, could you replace a 40 times objective with uh, one, for example, a 60 times uh, objective uh, to zoom in more? Okay, and the thing is, um, if your microscope has a so-called 160 millimeter um, standard, um, and in this case, in this case, uh, in this case, the, the viewer of my um, video actually has a microscope. It's a Celestron um, Labs CM1000C microscope. It has 160 millimeters uh, objectives, and yes, theoretically you can exchange it, um, but I do not recommend it. And the reason is is that the 60x objectives are quite expensive, um, and uh, it's not necessary because the gain in magnification is not so high, um, and uh, and that's I think the main reason why I would not recommend it is it's because you're going to lose power focality um, in most uh, most uh, most likely and what does this mean I'm gonna use this here as an example my microscope here if I basically now have uh, an image in focus using the the 4x uh, objective then it's also more or less going to be in focus with all of the other objectives but if one of them is now from a different company or um, yeah even if it fits in well if it's from a different company or even a different series it's going to be off focus when you start using it and that means uh, you have uh, to uh, turn the focus quite a 
bit. You don't know into which direction to turn it. Um, you might end up crashing the objective into the slide. So it is actually um, a little bit of a hassle. So I do not necessarily recommend this. If you really want to have a 60 times objective, then strictly, and you really want to work well with it, then strictly speaking, you also have to exchange the other objectives to make sure it's of the same series. So um, yeah, experienced macroscopists uh, will absolutely have no problems uh, with uh, uh, the lack of par focality. They will simply uh, refocus and they'll find it immediately. But beginners might have a problem with that. Um, so I do not recommend uh, the exchanging of the, um, of the objective. Also because really the gain in magnification is not really that high. And without a proper condenser, um, and uh, the microscope in this case does not have a proper condenser. You will, it's really not recommended because you will not gain the, the image quality. Okay, so um, is there more than just 25x eyepieces, 25 times eyepieces? Most eyepieces, standard microscope eyepieces, uh, magnify 10 times. There are some eyepieces that also have a magnification of, of, of 25 times. And you can see that the diameter is, of course, much smaller. And also something like the eye relief is smaller. And this means you have to really go close to your eye to still see a proper picture so if you there are so I, to my knowledge there are no eyepieces that have more than 25 times magnification but if there were the disadvantages would be really large because then the lens would probably even be even smaller and you have to move even closer um, and you do not really gain a lot okay so um, that is really I would say the maximum 25 times is really the maximum that you probably want to have so the next question, my microscope isn't uh, m much, it's a uh, $200 Celestron Labs CM1000C. Maybe you can tell me a better microscope for beginners. Yeah, and one where you can use also not only bright field, but also dark field. Now, I need to talk a little bit here. First of all, my honest view on the whole thing, um, I had a look at the at the website uh, of, of this microscope. Looks to be a perfectly decent microscope. I would actually stick with that microscope. Um, I do think that $200 is a little bit on the more expensive side. Um, I, I have to admit this, considering the fact that uh, for that money, you can already get microscopes that have a condenser on the bottom, okay, um, and also a microscopes that have a so-called mechanical stage. A mechanical stage is, uh, allows you, uh, you cannot see this in here. Uh, how am I going to do this? I cannot even lift but this heavy microscope here. Uh, I'm going to try it here. Look, uh, this is not very good. Do you see this here? Okay. If I turn this, then I can actually move the slide. Okay. That's called a mechanical stage. That's not very, that's not very good to lift a, a microscope like this. Um, okay, um, and uh, basically, um, if you buy yourself a microscope, get one, get yourself one that has a condenser on the bottom, okay, um, and also one that has a mechanical stage because you need to have a condenser like this to be able to do dark field. Because here on the bottom, what you can do is there's a filter holder, and if you can take it, you can take it off, okay, that's a filter holder, it's a blue filter to uh, balance the color temperature. And if you want to have dark field, what you can do is you can take uh, this uh, dark field patch stop, if you don't make, you can make one yourself if you want to, and you put it in into the filter holder like this, okay, yeah. and then it goes... Uh, beneath the condenser, okay, and then you have dark field. And in dark field, what you see is, is you see the specimen bright on a dark background. It looks pretty nice, uh, depends on the specimen. Not all specimens are suitable, but generally looks quite nice. Um, but you can only do that if your microscope has a condenser, okay? And uh, this specific microscope that you have does not have a, a condenser, um, uh, at least not one that looks like this and not one that allows you to connect uh, um, a filter. And so for this reason, what I recommend is, is if you get yourself a microscope, get yourself one uh, also with a condenser. And actually, most, uh, yeah, most mid-range microscopes uh, and also low-range microscopes have this, okay? So, that is uh, actually um, all I wanted to say. Um, and uh, the next question is, um, what, what zoom do you need or what magnification do you need to see cells? Not a lot. I mean, if, uh, if you look at onion cells, um, you can already see them with a four times magnification and a 10 times uh, um, eyepiece. So a total magnification of 40 times is already enough so that you can see cells. Um, sure, they're not very big, um, but uh, your microscope that you have can go up to a magnification 
um, using the 10 times eyepiece all the way up to 400. And if you use the 25 times eyepiece, you can get a magnification of a thousand times. Now, I think it might not be very meaningful uh, to do that because uh, the resolution also drops. It's a little bit more blurry. But uh, generally, you have a more than enough magnification. As a matter of fact, my microscope here that I have um, only has a magnification of 600 times maximum. Okay, um, I actually took away the 100 times oil immersion objective to, yeah, because I'm rarely using it. So my microscope here that I have is only able to magnify a little bit more than, than actually yours. So my advice is, is um, for right now, um, until you gain a little bit more experience, stick to your microscope. It's good enough. It's it's perfectly fine. Okay. Um, and then when you know a little bit more about the microscopy, and if you also know a little bit more about what you're going to do in the future and which direction you're going to go, then you can always um, invest a little bit more money into a, in, into a better microscope. And then you can actually also think about maybe getting a, a microscope with a trinocular head. Uh, that basically allows you to connect the camera and all of this or or yeah to with two eyepieces and so on so there are many more things I would uh, do the following um, you can make this decision later when you're a little bit more experienced with microscopy um, and uh, for right now I think it's perfectly fine and if you want to take pictures and if you want to publish pictures of uh, small clips online you can always do this uh, with uh, with a mobile phone camera okay so you're not uh, really missing out on any um, anything really because your microscope is good enough uh, to see the most important things okay so this is basically yeah yeah that that's it um, i wish you all of you a nice day and uh, all the best and as always happy micro hunting